This video coincides with the pelvis in foot femur position during a squat. When you're standing, the pelvis is going to be in a posterior pelvis expansion state where the sacrum is in nutation and the pelvis, the posterior aspect of the pelvis, SI region, is in external rotation. Then the femurs are going to be in internal rotation with the tibia relative external rotation due to the screw home mechanism. And your foot is going to be in a supinated or high arch position. As you sit down into the squat, your foot will be pronating or widening. Your tibia will be relatively internally rotated compared to the femur, which is externally rotating as you sit your butt down, the pelvis inlet widens to allow space for the guts to push down into your diaphragm, to push down into your pelvic diaphragm, to push down. You're going to sit down into that deep squat position, and the SI region is going to be internally rotated with the sacrum in counter nutation. Then as we stand back up out of that position, the foot will then start to resupinate. Your tibia will then be in relative external rotation due to the femur moving into internal rotation that is the screw home mechanism of the knee in closed chain and the pelvis will return to a narrower state with the sacrum in nutation and the SI posterior aspect of the pelvis in external rotation. So there's this known mechanism at the knee joint that's called the screw home mechanism. What happens with that in the open chain, meaning the foot is kicking upward, think of like a knee extension machine, is that the tibia externally rotates to lock the knee out at full extension. Now how that changes when you're in the closed chain or when your foot is down on the ground, say with like a squat and your foot does not, is not able to pivot, that is key. Your foot is not able to pivot, the foot is grounded, not moving. Taking a quick break from the video, we're going to mention that strength training is not necessarily locomotive training. When we're performing any type of athletic movement or linear movement, our foot is able to pivot on the ground. Our foot is able to rotate on the ground, which changes the context of the movement and it changes how you will see the movement pattern accomplished. This is something that we cover in depth in the Sports Rehab Expert Certification. In addition to going over other strength and conditioning based movement patterns, we also talk in depth about locomotion and athletic movement patterns. You can become Sports Rehab Expert certified at sportsrehabexpert.com or email me at greg at sportsrehabexpert.com to find out more information. As you straighten and stand up from that squat to lock the knee out, the tibia is going to be relatively externally rotated due to an internally rotating femur. So that's the difference between closed chain and open chain. When you're doing like a knee extension machine, that tibia is free to move and the femur is fixed on the bench. And so the tibia will move into external rotation to lock the knee out versus when you're squatting and the foot is fixed on the ground, your femur is what moves into internal rotation relative to the tibia that stays facing forward towards you, the camera, which is now facing into external rotation. So the motion is still the same where we get this sort of twisting mechanism of femur into internal rotation, tibia into external rotation. The difference is in the open chain, the tibia moves, and in the closed chain, it's the femur that is moving. So it's this relative motion that you're creating at the joints that allows for rotation to occur and allows for you to change depths into your squat. Now if you cue the squat in a particular manner, that can either aid in the rotations, the normal rotations that would occur at the knee joint with the rest of your entire body, or it can hinder what that movement actually occurs. So if you cue somebody to posteriorly tilt at the pelvis, that's going to create external rotation at the femur, which is what does not happen as you stand up out of a squat and as your knee straightens. Again, the femur has to internally rotate because of the screw home mechanism, which is known in research, 
to fully extend the knee as you stand up out of a squat. So if you're cueing somebody to posteriorly tilt or to tuck as they stand up out of the squat, I've been guilty of doing this in the past and it's something over the last couple years I've gotten completely away from because I was wrong. The femur internally rotates as you extend up. You do not cue somebody to posteriorly tilt as you stand up tall because that will create femur external rotation. You can simply just try this on yourself simply by standing tall and think about uh, tucking the tailbone underneath of you or if you had a belt buckle pulling the belt buckle or your belly button up towards your nose that is a posterior pelvic tilt if you watch your kneecaps in the mirror as you do that your kneecaps will move outward your kneecaps do not move outward as you straighten the knee the kneecap will move inward due to the relative internal rotation of the femur that happens relative to the tibia this is fixed on the ground in external rotation to create the screw home mechanism. So knowing that this movement is necessary and needed, that means our squat should mimic that motion. Now, the ideal for this is creating a setup that allows you to take your joints through a full excursion, maintaining this movement at the knee, meaning as you squat down, your femur is going to create relative external rotation, external rotation, because the tibia is facing straight forward and is fixed. So the tibia is in relative internal rotation as you squat down. That does not mean shove your knees out. It means keep your knee facing straight ahead and the relative motion that occurs at the knee joint will be femur external rotation, tibia internal rotation. Now, it's not a global movement where you're not trying to twist the knee or shove your knee in or shove your knee out. It's because these are the rotational elements of the joint that has to occur to keep your knee facing straight ahead. So the knee faces straight ahead as you squat down, but the relative motion that occurs here is femur external rotation and a fixed tibia facing forward into internal rotation. So that is the external rotation as you squat down into, this, into the squat. As you stand back up, the femur is going to internally rotate and the tibia again is going to be facing forward. So now the tibia is in relative external rotation. This is the screw home mechanism that happens in the squat and what you would expect during a squat. This is the movement that should occur and you should encourage when someone is squatting lunging, doing any sort of movement in the weight room. Now, if you don't get this exact movement to occur, is it going to be the end of the world? No. Is it gonna result in somebody getting injured? Likely not. But is it something where you're striving for optimal over an extended period of time? And will it likely help someone feel better over an extended period of time because of the efficiency of movement is there and you're working with the body, not against the body? I would argue yes. So if you're constantly orienting someone out into external rotation, feet out wide and creating this wide stance, understand the consequences of what you are doing there and what you are giving up more importantly by not orienting the feet straight ahead. It doesn't necessarily mean that foot out, toe out is a bad position. We could argue that it's working against the body how much of an importance is that or how much of a downfall is that, that's up for debate. But what we can not argue is the fact that it's going to take you away from the normal relative motions of the joint, which may just provide you with an environment to allow you to load more aggressively, more comfortably, with more fluidity and confidence because you're working with the body's normal joint range of motion as opposed to fighting it. So while many practitioners will say the best squat position and the best foot position during a squat is completely dependent on the individual, that may be correct to a certain extent, but it is very short-sighted, not, not giving the body full credit to the normal joint range of motion, the normal joint movement that is expected during a squat and in my opinion should be encouraged in a squat. Does this mean you're gonna currently be capable of achieving these positions? Not necessarily. You're gonna to have to start with what you currently can do, but as you work towards the normal joint mechanics that you would expect and the normal joint relative motion that you would expect during a squat, you can expect 
for that movement to feel differently and in many instances feel more comfortable because you're now you're working with the body as opposed to against the body.